So today's chapter discuss about um, obtaining data from internet. So rather than using um, click download to download the data from the internet, we can use command line tools to download data uh, from the internet. So uh, there are a lot of uh, tools that can be used um, to do a lot of stuff, uh, such as call, these, these, and uh, tar, which can be used to um, on archive files. So uh, the chapter first started discussing about um, uh, coffin files, local files uh, to the Docker container. So if we have a file on our computer and we want to move it to a Docker file, um, how can we do that? So um, I here I already have my, I'm already inside my Docker. Uh, as we have seen in chapter two, let me see now. Yep, so um, this is my Docker. Um, yes, and uh, this is the, uh, our folder data, uh, the folder we are working on. So the idea is now is assume here, we have um, a folder here called, um, um, let me say call enter here and we have a folder called um, data.csv now this hello I cannot hear you yeah a little bit yes I can hear you Okay, so what on the on the bottom uh, panel is that your local machine? Yes, exactly. This is my local machine. This is Docker. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. In you can divide. Okay. Now I can do this. Um. Split pen. Mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. I can add another pen here. Nice. So I can close this pen. I can walk mm -hmm. here and I can go up here, All right? So this is my Docker where I open it. And this mm -hmm. is my local machine. So, so here I'm inside a uh, um, uh, folder called, um, okay. So let me go to this folder. No, I'm inside this. So I have some uh, a file called data the CSV. So let me create another file. Um, touch data sets the CSV. So we can see inside my folder, I have a file called um, data sets of CSV. So mm -hmm. now, how can I move this file from my local machine to the um, my uh, maybe to my container so right. yeah so there are a lot of options for you to do that one thing we should do is this um because I have my docker is already um so we got cp so um here um, i can use this ways so the first thing is for you before you even start what you need to do is you need to um, find docker ps this command list <coughs> list the um, available containers you have. What um, does the PS do, Shamsuddin? So, so if you have containers and you want to see how many containers you have in your oh. machine, PS list all the containers you have available containers. Instead, of, instead for you to go to the graphical user interface you showed us last time, where you will see the list of the containers that are on. You can use Docker PS, and uh, it will basically show you the uh, available containers running. Meaning, so here, this is the container ID. This is the name of the container, and this is the time. Can you see that? So, uh, for me to move a file from my local machine to this yeah. container, I need to copy the uh, container ID. So oh. this con this container ID the one that will determine 
um, where am I pushing the uh, item? So now I copy this ID, I copy it, and now come back here and say Docker CP. We already know this command CP, right? Copy. Mm -hmm. So I already have that. I can use this. Um, so you can see this is when I first it. This is the um, container ID. Yeah. You put um, dash here. Um, what is the file I want to send from here? The file is called data send. Okay. So Docker copy this file to okay. this machine. Um, but where do I want to put it? If we look, come here, um, we can see um, 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 right. So here we can see this is my root. I have a data. Um, so I can say ls data. I can see these are the stuff inside my folder data. So if I want to put the item here, I will say, okay, um, put inside this folder called data and name the file data on Docker, um, data set on Docker, for example, on Docker. So this oh, is- so That's the name of the file you want. What do you have after? Okay. Exactly. exactly. So <laughs> what I'm saying in a nutshell is copy this file from my local machine yeah. to Docker inside this folder. This is yeah. the name you want to save it. Now, when I enter this, now this has now copied this file and save it in my folder in Docker with this name. So if we go here, previously you can see these are the number of files on my Docker. Now, so, are you yes. using the same shell for both interfacing with Docker and with your local machine? Is that the same kind of shell you're using? Exactly. And how do you, how in our, this is our studio, right? You have, is this our studio instance or is it something else? It's a terminal, it's a different terminal. Oh, so you're then, using MacBook Pro. So is it like, a, uh, uh, is it like Emacs or something? Okay, um, let me show you the, um, uh, the um, now our ls data, so you can see the file here. Mm. Data. Nice. Docker. Now this is what I'm using. Very nice. So if you look at this, um, this is called WAP. So it's a terminal. Okay. Oh, I see. That's a Mac specific terminal, maybe. Um, so it's a new terminal, but mm. it is for Mac users, I think, for now. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. So. And it's um, free. It's open source. Yeah. For um, yeah, it is free. For very nice. I have not heard of this. I should try it. Do you like it so far? Wow, very much. It's free. If you are using it individual, not teams or company. So, um, and is there a difference if you're working on a Mac versus if you're working on a Windows system, or is it the same terminal? Yeah, so it is the same, but for now it is available only on Mac. Oh, I see. okay. Yeah, so that's just a problem. Yeah. So, okay, got uh, it. So. To, to tell you, to show you more things that you can do that may, maybe you can like it. So sometimes you remember that um, you typically forget a lot of things what you want to do in command line. You don't remember those commands. Yeah. So what you can do with this terminal, what you can do, you don't need to remember, you can use something like this. You can say how to copy, how to copy. Oh, wow. It's like from, an AI, wow, AI command search. That yeah. is how to copy um, from local. To Docker. Can you see how to delete file? Remove, can you see? This is the. Very cool. It's using artificial intelligence to like do your search. How to, how to list directories? List 
So if you want to put the command, you can see the thing. So, so you can see. So it is using yeah. what is called Open AP, Open AI, Open AI, which is basically uh, uh, some kind of uh, deep learning model. Open AI. Open AI, actually. Very nice. So um, this is uh, Open AI. So it is using API from Open AI to mm. basically uh, allows you to. So with this command, you don't need to remember everything that how can I do this? How can I do that? You don't you need to go to, Yeah, you don't need to go to Google as well. Just search like this, uh, how to copy. Very nice. Well, I hope it becomes available for Windows to yeah. All right, Chamsuddin, sorry for distracting. Please proceed. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> maybe you need to migrate to MacBook. <laughs> You know, I <laughs> no, I think I stick to PowerShell, but that's too much of a big lift to move all of my stuff from Windows to Mac. Not I, yeah. Okay. So, so um, now we have seen how you can move a yeah. file from yeah. local machine to, yeah. um, but how can you move files now from Docker to uh, local, yeah, local machine? So yeah. let's look at here. We have um, CD data right we have something like this docker yeah. on data set so data set on docker now um, we want to move this file from docker to our machine so what we can do here here I'm in my local machine i can see docker cp can you see that uh, one good thing about this, then why is it you're saying git main you um, are you working off of like a git branch right now why does it say git main on your local Machine. Oh, yeah, because um, is uh, I, I I have Git is initialized with Git I uh, is is Git repo, so don't bother about it. Yeah, yeah. So one thing with this, yeah, one thing with this is that um, when I put Docker CP, um, yeah. if you if you have a history, I can just go back to previous command related to that. I just need to, you know, because can you see that? So here. Docker CP, you can see here, you provide where you want to move. This is my container. Where is, what is the name of the file? This is the name of the file. Right. So that's the container ID, right? The first thing, the yes. container ID and the yes. folder, okay. Yes. Yeah. For, um, I want to move from container to my local machine. So this is, um, desktop uh, and I'm moving into desktop and uh, and desktop I want to say okay it has it on local local so um, what this is saying move this file or copy this file from docker to my uh, local machine and name this file uh, this thing so when I type this no um, Okay, so let me see. Uh, I think, it's, Luca. I think yeah. it's because your path, you haven't changed it to the data directory on your path. Oh, uh, okay. You're in the root, I think, isn't it? So you may have to, there, I think it's probably just going to your root, but you need to CD into the data directory or uh, at least provide. Oh, okay, 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 you are right, you are right, you are right. So can you actually change to the, oh yeah, I guess you can just specify that in your path so. Yeah, okay. It really hates this, any path mismatch, isn't it? It just completely goes crazy if uh, yeah. it's not able to find things. Yep, so now I'm inside my so data set called local. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. Good chance of being. So this is uh, a very good way to uh, to move yeah. back and forth. Yeah, that's true. So um, apart from that, if you don't have this, there is something called Navi. And it's probably really fast. Also, even for large data files, I'm sure like this process is uh, 
Yeah. I don't know how it, I don't know how it compares with something like um, Deepfire or whatever, but I, I I don't know. Like for really large data files, I'd be interested to see how it performs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, if you don't want, if you don't have this, maybe you can use this tool called Nibi. So, for example, I installed this Nibi when you install, so you can have um, Docker. So all commands for Docker, you will see them. You don't need to remember anything. So for example, you want to um, do this, uh, uh, okay, uh, list or image, list all image. So this is a command to list all image. Um, yeah. Um, Docker kill, if you want to kill it, um, a container. Yeah. Can, so Very nice. uh, if, if you want to Docker stop container, if you want to stop. So this is something helpful. This is different from this one. So if you want to install this, and so the, the moment you install, for example, if you want to do copy, maybe you forgot it, you can see a lot of how to do copy, you know, shell, copy, all of that. So if you want to install Navi, you can come here, Navi. This is, uh, it's That's not- general. Does Jerome in, in indicate this in the book or did you find this out yourself? No, no, no it's me. You? Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, Navi, is it? Is that what it's called? Wow. Yeah, so nice. you, can, you, you, don't, you don't need to remember everything in the top of your head. Right? Is this only for Docker or Navi or is it a cheat sheet for everything on command line? Anything? Anything. So, yeah. So, for example, um, um, uh, um, the next thing we're gonna see call. You can see there are many how to call. So it is basically a cheat sheet. You remember cheat sheet, yeah. right? But a cheat it's sheet. On, yeah, on your terminal. So all you need to do, even you on your Windows, you can install Navi, and uh, all you need is just if you want to do something, you can just. Uh, yeah, call Navi and uh, yeah, and say, and uh, yeah. Very nice. Okay, so that is about um, um, moving files from container and whatsoever. And uh, yeah, we've been talking about, yeah. Um, the next thing is um, downloading from the internet. Okay. Um, so, um, Um, so, with me. so uh, there are many tools that you can use to download stuff from the internet. One way is using what is called call. Um, so, so, um, for us to use call, it's okay. Let's look at what call is. So if we say TDL call. So here I just look at the help for call and it tells us transfer data from or to a server. So basically a call protocol allows you to download something from internet or send something from the internet. Um, there are many things you can do with it. Um, you can see here, you can download content from the API, um, download a file, save it to the output, and many, many other things. So let's look at what we can do with the call now. Um, so for example, um, if we want to uh, download something from a website, so we can say call. Um, 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 for example, Yes, something like this. So this means that- um, So Chrome is only for downloading version something or does it uh, do anything else? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, this is a good question that differs it from that is what is called WGET. WGET, you remember? Uh, okay, I will show. So this is not, it transfer data from or to a server. It can do both ways. You can download from a server, you can send to a server. Call, you can do both ways. So 
you can see this is what is support HTTP and PT. So you can see you can see it can do a lot of things. Um, FTP, many other protocols apart from these over two hundred protocols um, it supports. So um, if I want to download whatsoever here and now put um, name what I download here. I can use this um, this stuff, so you can see it's downloading. And now it will save the file as this. So this is what called the. Um, so I use this again example like this. But um, when we download this, you can see call. What we use is this um, call example.com. It will just display the content of this that it downloaded on your screen. But if you want to save the content, not display it in the screen, we, we can provide the name as I shown here. Uh, for example, uh, you download it here and provide this, and now the file is saved at this. So when we look at our current directory, we can see this is the example that this. So we can say cat example. Um, example two, example two, dot HTML. So you can see, so that is um, cut. Right. Um, so um, we can also use um, this to, um, we can also use this, for example, uh, cut, uh, no, no. Um, um, call example. It's so cool, uh, Samsa. Then you can do FTP and everything here. So they have all the option for the cert, setting up the certificates and the SSL and everything. And I, I'm struggling with this because I have everything set up on route. Uh, uh, route uh, what is it? 66 on uh, AWS something. Mm -hmm. There is some route 53 or 66 on that you can set up. Yeah. So, so this is really damn cool to do it directly from here. Yeah, you can do a lot. So, like uh, as I told you, um, using Navi. So, if you look at it, so you can see you can do a lot of things called send and send and get HTTP requests. Um, send. You can see a lot of commands. Send HTTP requests. You know, authentication. Many other things you can do with um call. Yeah. And also, this is um, really cool. Yeah, so um, one thing we should also is that uh, um, call also. You're trying to do SUDO, bo is that what you're trying to do? Sorry? You're trying to do SUDO here, sudo? No, no, no. Because I can see sudo pacman command not uh, found there. Uh, I think um, it's Navi that is asking me password and uh, he do this sudo. Yeah. So okay. So um, um, another thing we can do with uh, a call is that sometimes it's bubbles. So for example, I can use minus s and I say example.com. And I say, okay, save it in example <clears> that <throat> HTML, meaning S means you can see here it was bubbles when it is downloading. Uh, yeah, here, yeah, like this, it shows all the progress, right? So if you don't want to see the progress, you can see minus S, which is means silent. So when you do this, so it will just save everything. There is no that kind of um, <clears throat> bubble stuff. Um, yeah. So that is uh, how we, we can use bubble. Um, we can use a uh, uh, call for uh, HTTPS, but also we can use um, call for uh, FTP server. So we can have call. <coughs> um, so call FTP. If you are working with FTP server, so we want to download image from FTP server. This is a format. FTP, this is the server, and now you supply it. So this is, uh, you can download the message from FTP server. 
because I put, yeah, so you can see the message from um, the uh, So I'm thinking, what does the dash S do again? Can you remind me? Which one? This one? That In S? The dash S. Ah, okay. So let me show you. Um, when I remove the S, I say call. Let's look what will happen. Okay, this is not a good example. Let me show you another. Yeah, this. Uh, so if I remove S, I use this. Look at what level. Come. Okay. Oh, because so what is happening is that. Uh, if you okay, <clears throat> oh, um, call. I want to see. But, uh, oh, let me take this example from the book and show what that I mean. Yeah, great. So if you look at this, I put call. And now when I tap enter, you can see that here. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> the, maybe uh, let me say okay. Example. HTML. Oh. So basically what S means is it just silent the bubbles when you are doing some stuff. So sometimes when you look at it here, uh, it actually shows you the um, shows you the time of downloading, how many time remains. So it will basically silent everything. So this is what I'm saying. Can you see example from the book? this it will show you time receive time you know so when you use s it will silence everything so that this will not be outputted that is what is mean do you do you understand what i mean okay so that's um, um but also um there is another command called w get this one do you know this one gldr I've definitely heard it, but I don't know where I've heard it. So let's look at it. So what is this? Download file, files from the web. Support HTTP, HTTPS, and HTTP. So you can see they are more or less the same with call. So how can you do that? For example, you want to download the same file. Um, you want to download file here. So I can say, okay, um, here I have a file. You can see download file and save it with the name. Um, this, get. So this minus this, it means download everything from this website and now save it with this name. Now, when I use this, so you can see it is bubbles here, right? It is bubbles, it's telling me when I put my, for example, um, minus X, I think. Uh, okay, let's see about that. So you can see it does the something. Um, so when I go, can you see the, uh, my file? When I, okay, cut, can you see? I say it. so basically um the the w get is still um this I'm just saying, is it possible to save um something from the internet and something other than a dot html form like can you save it if, if you don't want it to be in dot html can it yeah. also be any other extension or yes 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 if it is a CSV, it. if it is a csv file you can save it any file because the, the reason why we use the html we already know that um, um, example.com is HTML file, right? 
the reason why I said this as that HTML is that the content of example.com is HTML, right? So that is why I said, it. so if this is a file, maybe the CSV, so I will save whatsoever file I have here, the CSV, right? Yeah. So um, there are many differences between call and get. Um, yeah, but uh, ultimately call is more powerful than get and uh, w get. And people prefer to use a call in products and then using I guess, but it, the book didn't mention that, but it's good for us to know uh, the, the two. So you can use both call and get, um, uh, call and double get, but uh, call is better. Um, so um, actually call is the cool stuff. Um, you can see, you can use call. Um, what I found is that uh, if you are into um, Forex, you can use call, red.xs to show you the um the this bitcoin prices um you can see coin btc so this is a core stuff um, that you can use um call red.xx it allows you to see the current price for bitcoins so this is something cool um, that you can use with them. Um, another cool thing I found that you can use with call is um, from your terminal, you can find the weather in your city. So for example, San Francisco, I can use this. Um, yeah, so you can see you can see the uh, today weather in San Francisco, morning, uh, noon, evening, Wednesday or one. This is something cool. Now uh, you can use from your terminal to see this. Uh, so yeah, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Shamsa, I got on another call. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you done? I'm good now, Shamsa. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, I just showed some cool stuff that you can use with um, call. So for example, you can see here, um, I can say, okay, give me the weather for Porto. So this um, from my command line, it will um, shows me the weather in today. And um, uh, yeah. <sighs> so, It takes some time. So this is something you can see. Um, yeah, photo is yeah, from your area, you can uh, just find uh, weather. Uh, another thing uh, is, uh, as I showed, is finding the rate of uh, uh, Bitcoin and other stuff. So that is about a uh, call. Um, yep. Yeah. Anything you want to add from that or you want to ask question? Uh, 
No, this is great. I, I this was uh, very wonderful. This was wonderful because I've heard such great things about Curl, and I didn't really know. And I, I think this was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So the next thing he discussed is about. Uh, um, yeah, uh, this is redirecting also the card that um, the compression files. So um, what he meant by the compression file is that uh, sometimes because files are large enough, um, we download them compressed from the internet. When we bring them into our computer, we need to uh, decompress them, right? So what he uh, explained basically, <clears throat> we can use um, tar command to this uh, compressed file. So let me see in this. Uh, um, so when we go to chapter three, yeah. So we can see here we have uh, this compressed. So what we can use is just tar um, logs, right? Um, logs that tar. Why is this hmm. the GZ? Ah, okay. Uh, so for example, now, if I forgot something, that is what I usually do. I don't remember everything. I just use TLDR tar. So if I use this to show me um, the relevant commands that I can, oh, it didn't have it, okay. Okay, so TLDR, no, tar, XZF, and uh, you can put the name of the file. So, so let's look at it. Oh, it's still working. So this is basically uh, what will untie a file if the file is uh, archived. So this command will untie it. Ah, oh, it's taking long. Maybe the I wonder file if is... there's a lot of, uh, I wonder if, there's, if it's a really huge file or something. Yeah, maybe, and just scratch it. So maybe, um, uh, let me see. Oh, uh, it's a huge file then, wow. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's um, the compression file. But um, how can we uh, compress file now? For example, uh, do you know how to compress file on your computer from terminal? So for example, um, let me go back. So here you can see um, I have, uh, let me create a folder um, called compress. So here we can see I have a folder called compress. So maybe this folder, I have many files in it and I want to compress it. So if you want to compress it from terminal, you can use star, um, my C, uh, that is compressed and B, F, and you specify the file you want to compress. So maybe this file, so you can put it here. And you say, okay, ta, um, how do you, but ta, ta. So meaning I want to compress this folder with a lot of file inside and the compression, the file will now be compressed, but ta, this is how I want it. When I run enter, no. Ah, okay, um, I need to specify the file um, I want to compress. So this is, uh, this is uh, 03. Anyway, um, I can say this is because I'm inside the folder. So let me show you. I'm inside, let me go to three. Hmm. 
啊。I have many files I uncompress it. Let me go back. So um, I want to compress this file. I can say tar dot tar. Now I can say here and specify the location of the file um, uh, where the file will be saved. Say so, okay. It's not working. Uh, let me see, torch, example, the CSV. So I have a file called example, the CSV. I uh, can use this, the CVF. And now I need to provide uh, example, the tab and the location. Oh, uh, yes, okay, um, home, okay, maybe like this. So now if we go to home, home, Let me find it. Anyway, um, I couldn't find where I put it. Um, so uh, let me go back. Anyway, um, so let's just move on. So command to uh, correct uh, 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 to actually do this uh, stuff is this and you can see it here tar um here if you want to untar the file this is what you do um but also uh you can use this if you want to see the content of the file you can see here you just untar the file but if you want to see the content of the file, you can use this uh, stash. Yes. All right. Let's move on. Oh, then this is uh, another thing that we explain. Um, so let's go to chapter three. Um, so we discuss about this. We have a particular file here and we can see the content, but what he talk about with the tab, we can basically use um, another thing called CSV lookup because the look of this is not that good. So we can use a CSV lookup and CSV lookup will allow you to format to see the uh, files in a pre-formatted format. So you can see it in a very uh, a better way than looking at this because you can see here we have comma, comma. But this one allows you to see the uh, files in a better way. Um, there is also uh, another package called CSV look. So this CSV look, um, you already saw it, I think. Um, uh, CSV look allow you to do many other things with uh, CSV from command line. Um, if we go to this doc, so if we go to this documentation, um, yeah, so there are many uh, things you can do with uh, CSV. Uh, you can claim. You can do many other stuff. Uh, 
Yeah, for example, you can convert Excel to CSV. You can convert JSON to CSV. You can um, select columns from a given CSV. You can uh, convert JSON um, from CSV to JSON. So you can do Very a lot of- You can convert it into so many formats. Exactly, exactly. So you can do a lot of stuff with this, uh, which is very handy. Um, so yeah, so that's what he explained with that. So for example, you can um, use this to convert this um, file, which is in Excel to CSV. Um, so when we run this, yeah. So um, if you look at this, yeah, so here you can see he did a, he does a conversion and do a trim to list some uh, stuff. So this is it. So this is um, one way to use this uh, uh, stuff. Um, yeah, so you can also query database um, using SQL to CSV, which is also from this uh, uh, package we, uh, we saw. Um, what is it called? Oh, this one from this. So this is also to query CM relation database. And you can also uh, um, interact with the web API using the same call command. Uh, how many minutes we have? Oh, we have two minutes. <laughs> yeah, so um, authentication, you can use also call for authentication. You can specify other stuff for streaming API. Also the something is called, um, just more or less the same what we are saying. So that is basically about this chapter, um, talking about uh, how you can move your file from local machine to uh, Docker. And you can just add that book from the internet using wget and call. And uh, you can do compress files using tar command. And uh, we can also extract um, data from spreadsheet to CSV using this, uh, uh, this uh, CSV kit. You can do a lot with that. And you can do um, query relational data with um, web API. So that is all I have for this chapter. And, uh, <laughs> We are one minute on time. <laughs> so that's perfect, Shamsuddin. Thank you so much. Uh, this was really useful. And I'm going to um, try what we did now because it's it just makes it easier having seen you do it. So really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I will share also my um, my reflection because like uh, uh, I think uh, it, it will help me like uh, create a blog of each chapter. So each chapter, I will start writing a blog post about what I learned. So I will share it in the channel today so that you can see my summary. Yeah, that would be great, Shamsuddin. Thank you so much. I have to jump off now. I have a nine o'clock call, but thank you so very much. It was great. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Bye.